I'd hoped that we wouldn't ever have to make another one of these, but thanks to the brilliant design team at Bushy Road, it really has come down to this. Anyway, as I'm sure you've noticed by now, two new stride deck sets have been released into the meta. Both of them are actually a problem, one really more so than the other at the current moment in time. Man, it seems Bushiro just can't release a stride deck set without it being completely broken. I mean, unless you're Messiah. My personal feelings aside, let's get back into the deck for today. She ran we. <laughs> Can you imagine if I did that for the whole video? I'll save you the thought and just call it Shiranui. Anyway, let's overcome, overcome destiny, destiny and, and domination, domination by going over the deck, what makes it strong, and how you can beat it. As we always do, let's start on the ride line. Riding the grade 1 over Madoi gets you the Shiranui Crest. I'm gonna assume you know what a Stride Crest does and only review the fact that dominated units lose all their abilities and get 5k power. Because only the grade 0, 1, and 3 are actually required in the ride line, Shiranui has tossed out its original grade 2 in favor of the Shoujo Doji grade 2. This card checks the top 5 cards of the deck and puts 1 stealth in your soul and calls a second. It's important to note that the strength of this interaction has already prompted a response from Bush Road, as the JP side has created an entirely new fighter's rule that states you must play the full ride line, and this change will most likely be coming to the English side soon. Lastly, we have the Grade 3 Shiranui Oboro. This blast from the past can call a rearguard from the opponent's drop at the start of your turn, setting up the stride skill. When Oboro is stridden over, you can give one of your opponent's rearguards 4k power and dominate it. In case you don't know what Dominate is, it just means that the Shiranui player takes your rearguard and uses it to attack you. Next, I suppose we can go over the strides. Mug and Tembu lets you dominate a rearguard for 1 CB, with it retiring at the end of the battle. Mukuro is the other stride, which requires an Oboro to stride into. For 1 Soul, you can dominate a rearguard, and then dominate the Vanguard to attack into a rearguard. For the support cards, it's pretty simple. We've got Fudai and Seke. When your Vanguard attacks, if a unit was dominated this turn, each can Soul Blast 1 to restand themselves. Fudai gets 5k power for each dominated unit that has attacked this turn, and Sekai can get 10k power and draw a card if they're two face up G units. Aside from that, a lot of the deck is fairly flexible. Tenrei is a card that allows you to convert CB into draws, Esperdia is played as an additional restander, and Stride Father Dragon allows for additional cycling or board control. We could also mention Iza Saul, who can allow you to grab any piece or PG you need, but given that the deck won't be able to play him in the future, it's probably not worth dwelling on. So, the biggest strength of Shiranui is multi-attack. On the first stride turn, Shiranui has a minimum of 5 attacks for 1 CB, and a maximum of 7 attacks if the front row units are re-standers. And unlike other multi-attack decks in the format, these attacks aren't just tiny pokes. Each one calls for at least a 10k guard. If we add that to the natural consistency and draw power afforded to stride deck sets, we get a deck that will remain as a strong force in the meta for the foreseeable future. The biggest and maybe only real weakness of Shiranui is the reliance on domination. If you're able to prevent the Shiranui player from dominating your rearguards, you not only shut down two attacks from the stride skill and Mog and Tembu, but also the ability for the rearguards to restand. Unfortunately, this is much easier said than done. The skill of Shiranui forces the opponent to have a rearguard, and Mukuro, although slower, can still be used. The only other weakness that Shiranui realistically has is its weakness in the early game. Decks capable of quickly rushing the deck will be able to push the deck in the early game and be capable of pushing high amounts of damage to the point where they can easily finish off Shiranui on turn 3 or 4. However, at the time of this video, this strategy is less effective due to the existence of the Great 2 Shoujo Doji, who provides a free body on board and nets free pluses with Iza Sao. Whether or not this will be a more viable strategy after the hit remains to be seen. Clearing your board. As we detailed in the weakness portion, if you're able to prevent Shirunui from dominating, you're effectively buying yourself a free turn, since their turn will be relegated to just 3 attacks. However, this strategy will only be effective if you're able to completely clear your board, which is not something most decks are well equipped to do. Realistically, there are only a few decks that I can think of that are able to consistently clear its board every turn. However, this strategy can actually only buy you one turn, since during the next turn, you'll be forced to call something from your draw. Early Rush The other core strategy would be to aggro the Shiranui player as much as possible. Finishing game as quickly as possible has and will continue to be a very good strategy. 
As always, there will be some considerable risks inherent to this kind of game plan. As you fill your ranks, your hand will be depleted, leaving you open to the counterattack. If you're not able to close things out, you're putting yourself at a huge disadvantage. One you likely won't live through. Grade 2 Gaming if we take a look at the premium format, we can see another way to potentially counter Shirunui. Since both players need to be at grade 3 in order for them to stride, simply not riding to a grade 3 is a way to slow down Shirunui's game plan. If you plan to go for this method, there's a few things you should probably know. First, your deck shouldn't be reliant on grade 3 cards. If you're not going to ride up, all those grade 3 cards are going to be useless in your hand, so there's no point attempting to grade 2 game unless your deck is mostly comprised of grade 1 or 2 units. Second, attacking into rearguards and defending yours is key. The attacking rearguards represent pressure, so taking them out can lessen the overall toll on your hand. This goes in both directions though, so keeping healthy rearguards lets you keep up your own pressure. Third, put a booster behind your vanguard. The vanguard swing is the most pressure you can output on grade 2, so leaving it unboosted makes it prey to easy 15k blocks. Forcing the opponent to take the one to pass the vanguard can lead to an advantageous position sometimes hitting a trigger can be the deciding factor. Some final things to note. Your deck will have a much better time if you can have cards that plus, since you'll be able to increase your board presence without losing as much hand advantage. Lastly, if your deck is capable of making columns that can hit over defenses, you'll probably have an easier time as well. Guard Patterns Okay, so what if you're completely adamant about playing your one deck that can't counter Shiranui in any of the previously listed ways? Well, don't worry, good ol' Kerbinite's got you covered with the numbers. Let's take a look at the typical first strike turn, and see what our optimal guardian could look like. For this analysis, I'm going to assume that Shirinui goes second, and no triggers are flipped. Furthermore, the board we're looking at is a Senkei with a Furai, which technically is not optimal, but tends to be pretty typical, and will serve better for the point I'm trying to make. The first and most obvious point to make is that the grade of the dominated unit only matters if a grade 1 is dominated, as this will call for a 5k shield, whereas a dominated grade 2 or 3 always call for 10k shield. While keeping only grade 1s on board may be a viable counter, it's unrealistic and only works if the Shirinui is going second, as they're likely to just call grade 2 or 3 from a drop zone anyway. For the purposes of this analysis, we're going to assume a grade 2 is being dominated. Hopefully the first thing you noticed was that a lot of these attacks actually get shut down by a single defensive. Assuming you can hit a defensive on the first attack, you'll shut down the second dominate attack as well as both set case swings, effectively cutting the number of attacks in half. Fudai swings become a 5k guard, and the vanguard is also somewhat more manageable. Now of course, there are a few problems with this strategy. First off, it relies on you getting lucky. Second, you'll need to be able to put yourself in a position where this is actually a viable strategy. This means guarding early and being at no more than 3 damage. And lastly, and this is a big one, this will only work against the first stride turn. On a second stride, Magen Tembu has an extra 15k to the front row, and Senke gets another extra 10k, putting his attacks on par with Fuda. Remove Rears I would say that your next best bet would be to attack into rearguards as much as you can afford. Each restanding rearguard you take out is one less attack on the next turn. Depending on how much power you throw at them, you might even get a considerable amount of guard out of the Shirinui player as they desperately try to protect them. Order of priority should probably be Furai, Seke, and then Esperidia. However, and I'm starting to feel like I've been saying this a lot, there's a catch. The deck can play upwards of 8 Restanders, so killing one may not accomplish anything if they have a spare in their hand. Additionally, like all stride deck sets, the longer the game goes on, the harder it will be to live, as the crest will ramp up even the weakest rearguard to unguardable amounts. Specific Counters As with many decks and standards, there are specific counters that can be used in deck building stage to give your deck a better fighting chance. The first thing that comes to mind are counter heals. Both counter attack and counter grave heals can be useful in the right situation. The counter place blitz order can also be an effective tool for later in the game, giving you access to a 30k shield. However, some of these conditions might not always be the easiest to maintain. There is also a little card named Angel Ladder, which is capable of shutting down an entire turn against Shiranui. While playing this card will buy you a free turn, it's only a slight reprieve, and due to its status as a Regalius piece, can only be used once and is exceedingly difficult to search out. Furthermore, it prevents you from playing any other Regalius piece that your deck might be reliant on. As a final resort, you might want to try out adding some removal cards into your deck. 
Like I said before, removing Shirinui's re-standers can be a good strategy, and having ways to get rid of them without attacking allows you to put more pressure on their vanguard. Resist. Okay, so this last one is only for people who really want to fuck with Shirinui players. Theoretically, if you could build a board with Resist, you would completely shut down every single Shirinui turn. Unfortunately, the only cards with Resist are Trickstar and Bastion Accord. Bastion would need to maintain only a Grade 3 Rearguard on the front row, and Trickstar in anything other Nirvana is an affront to nature and everything that is good in this world. However, there is one shining beacon left in standard, one glimmer of hope, meant to save us from a world dominated by Shiranui, and his name is Empix. An Empix on board makes a sad Shiranui, as he allows you to keep an entire column free from Shiranui's grubby little fingers. No domination means no restands and only 3 attacks per turn. Even Shirinui's start of turn can't get past Empex as you can simply call the unit in front of Empex and maintain perfect protection. Unfortunately, the stipulation of Empex is that you must have 3 rearguards or less, so there really is only one deck that can effectively maintain an Empex board. The good boy, the bestest boy, Magnolia. Magnolia is unironically very capable of slaughtering Shirinui players. I would say it's a good pick this meta, but even in a format dominated by a single deck, there are still other matchups to consider. Matchups that Mag not, might not have the greatest time against. But if your goal is to simply to fuck with Shirinui players, hey, try out the deck. So there it is, the acclamations of my insights on Shirinui. I tried my best to offer up the best strategies as possible for countering the deck, but it still feels like every point I tried to make always had an asterisk. The fact that this deck has already gotten hit on the ban list and forced the creation of an entirely new fighter's rule just goes to show how poorly thought out the deck really was. I tried my best to offer up what you can do to increase your chances of winning against the deck, and hopefully it's useful for some of you. Well, until next time. This has been Curb Knight. Do all those YouTube things, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.